Hello everyone, my name is Vladwolf and welcome to the third part of the Web Developer Essential series. I want your full attention on this one because this one is very, very important. We will be incorporating the blockchain stack in our existing web application and you have to be very careful because a lot of things are changing with the frameworks that we'll, we will be using. So I want your full attention on that. So let's get started. In this tutorial, we will need two things, a test RPC network and a library that will allow us to connect to the blockchain. And this library is called Web3.js. So the test RPC network, you can find it if you, if you just Google test RPC and you will find test RPC here. You just need to install it globally. So npm install dash G Ethereum GS test RPC. This will allow us to spawn a um, basically a blockchain, a virtual blockchain in our memory and play with it without the need to install a real blockchain. I already have it installed, so I will run it simply by going to my terminal and doing test RPC. And here we have it, a uh, blockchain with some accounts to play with and with some private keys, a, a HD wallet, etc. And this uh, blockchain is available to contact on the local host 8545. Meaning if you make a re HTTP request to the local host port 8545, you'll be able to talk with the blockchain. It is not the only way for the blockchain to communicate with us. Blockchain can use WebSockets or IPC, but HTTP is the most common protocol. So let's hide it for the moment, we don't need it just that you know that we have already a blockchain running. So now we will install Web3.js in our project. So you have to Google it and eventually, if you Google it, you will find a GitHub uh, page. So you go there and be aware that when you go there, you will probably land on the develop branch. And this is not the branch you should be using. Basically, not so long time ago, the guys behind Web3.js have released the 1.0 version and it changed everything. And when I say everything, it's really everything. So you need to really uh, pay attention on this one. So when you go there, you have to select the branch 1.0, not the develop branch. Once you have the good branch selected, you will see that the readme will change and you can install it with npm install web3. So we will do it. I already did that, but I will do it with you. We can use yarn or npm. Uh, let's use yarn, yarn add web3. And for some reason, the yarn is actually failing there. It asked me to select a package, but uh, yeah, basically there you should be using npm install. <laughs> so npm install, save, because npm does not uh, automatically save the package you just installed in the package.json file and web3. So once it's installed, we can close that and actually go to Atom. So we will first be testing our library without any server. So we will comment this out. We don't need that now. And we will try to contact our blockchain and remember that our blockchain is, uh, is there. So we have 10 accounts and it is accessible on localhost 8545. I will first require the Web3.js const Web3 and the web3 is here in with a capital letter require uh, web3 const web3 with the small letter and this is an object we will create a new instance of web3 class and new web3 so let's test it yarn start Cool, we have no errors, meaning everything is good and required. So let's let's console log word three. Oh, sorry. Web three. Forgot the three. Okay, we have a lot of functions and a lot of objects, and this is normal. This is a big library. So now we will connect to our blockchain. So web three um, set provider new web3 
providers. And let's actually console log the web3 providers so we can see the different providers. And the providers would be your blockchain basically. So you see that you have the WebSocket provider, the HTTP provider, and the IPC provider. And when a program is running, in order to interact with that program, you need some kind of uh, communication channel, right? Because it is like one processes, and in order to access the memory and the uh, runtime of that processes, you need some kind of like door, some kind of socket. And this is basically uh, what IPC uh, provider does. I mean, the IPC uses the IPC socket, meaning our blockchain can use either WebSocket communication, HTTP communication, or IPC. And IPC is basically a physical like socket on your on your desktop. So with it only on your computer, and it looks like a file, but it's not a file. It's basically a socket, a door that allows for uh, inter-processes uh, communication. By the way, it's called IPC inter-processes communication. HTTP uses the same thing, but like with an API, it uses the HTTP protocol and WebSocket uses the WebSocket protocol. WebSocket um, is very fast, is bi-directional, and it is good if you need to uh, monitor your blockchain or stream uh, real-time data from your blockchain, you should probably use WebSocket, but in our case we will use HTTP provider since our Ethereum test RPC uses HTTP provider as well. So now that you know what kind of providers we have, we can just uh, erase that and connect to our blockchain. So new Web3 providers, HTTP provider, and then we will indicate the the way, the path where we can contact our blockchain and our blockchain is on the localhost 8545, right? So HTTP localhost 8545. Cool. So now let's let's execute something from the blockchain. And I will go to the Web3.js API. Actually, when you are on the Web3.js page on the branch 1.0, you scroll down and you click on documentation, read the docs, and you will, you will get to that website, read the docs. And here you have the API. I will not go through the API now, and that's really not the purpose of the video, but you can find all the information there, basically. And uh, yeah, let's let's do something. Let's let's render all the accounts. You see that we have a bunch of accounts. Let's render them in our application so th that we can prove the, that we actually contacted the blockchain and that we can um, have a connection with it. So in order to get the list of the accounts, we need to use the add um, object web three dot add dot accounts and. Remember in the past you could do that, right? You could do web3.add.accounts and it would instantly get you the accounts that the blockchain has. Well, this is not the case anymore with the web3.js 1.0. I think that they got rid of uh, synchronous requests. And when I say synchronous requests, uh, you need to understand that uh, most of Node.js is asynchronous, meaning that you make a request and then you make a callback or a promise or reactive programming or something like that. Basically, you you tell Node.js to do something and it will do it later. And when it will do it, it will notify you. That's basically how Node.js works. And if you try to do something like console log dot uh, web three dot add dot account, it will not work. And they got rid of the function anyway, so it will not just not find it. So look. So the way to do it is to use get accounts, and basically for every like uh, Ethereum function like add accounts, uh, I don't have any examples, but every time that you have something synchronous or you had something synchronous, now it's asynchronous. So instead of doing accounts. You would do get, and you would capitalize the uh, 
be name. So this is a function we need to call. But since it's a asynchronous function, when we will call that, it will return a promise. So when we call the function, it will return a promise, right? And if you don't know what a promise is, I can make a, a video on that. Basically a promise that Node.js makes to contact you later. But since you didn't put any conditions, it, it will not contact you. So this is what we are going to do. We will, we will use the callback function. So web3.add get accounts, and we will use the callback function and we'll use res console log actually it's error first error then res if the callback returns an error this will not be null and otherwise this will be null and this will return something console log error res let's execute that so you see that first we return the error which is null, and then we returned a array of accounts, which are the same accounts that we had there. So we just proved that we can contact the blockchain. Okay, so now I will show you a bit uh, easier way to do that because this is not uh, this is not not something that you can remember by heart. So instead of doing that, we can just do HTTP localhost. 85, 45, and the same should work. Cool. Also, if you're not comfortable with all that, I suggest you check my tutorials on the red ones. Install Ethereum the right way and the second way. And in the second one, I will actually talk about the internal uh, objects and APIs and stuff like that. So let's integrate it to our web server and send it to our front end. So let's come in this out. Let's get rid of that. We don't need that. So since we already have our Ajax request, let's use that in order to, to send our data from the blockchain directly to the front end. So, so let's just copy that and there. And actually we have a problem with the arguments, which are the same. So we need to do something we need to change them so error and let's call it response or addresses addresses it's better addresses and uh, instead of doing console log we will do if error is equal null then arrest send json stringify text and it's not text test it's uh, addresses here we go. We can now restart the server and get our browser and click the button undefined, undefined. That's normal because now we are not sending the Vlad Wolf anymore. We are sending something else. So let's just do that. Restart the web page and here we go. We have all the accounts. Now, and let's say that I want to store the accounts. Var accounts is equal to JSON parse this response text. And I will just get the, the first account. Account. The first account. Account zero. So yeah, you can get the first account, you can get the second account and we successfully contacted the blockchain with the Web3.js with the version 1.0. When the user actually uses the Ajax request, we did a call to the blockchain to get the information from the blockchain and we sent it back to the user with thanks to our web server. And most of the blockchain applications will do the same thing. You will have a web server that will serve your, your UI, basically your website, and the web server will have either a blockchain node, either a way to contact it with a HTTP protocol, WebSocket, or something else. The web server will contact the blockchain, will parse the data if needed, and will render the data in the front end. That's the basic architecture of a decentralized application. In the next video, we will 
use a smart contract, a basic smart contract, and we will use the same principle. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe to my channel and subscribe to my Facebook. This is very important. Facebook, Twitter, um, those are those two are very, very important because I will make all the announcements uh, concerning the courses, concerning uh, the collaborations and concerning everything there. And yeah, so see you in the next video.